Hey everybody, this is Russ from Metro Game Core. So yeah, I have a Steam Deck in my hands again, but luckily this one is actually mine. So a good friend of mine, Thor over at Retro Handhelds, got his hands on this 64 gigabyte model here. And he played around with it for a few days and then installed a 512 internal storage drive. And you know, after that he said, hey Russ, I'm willing to trade a few of your devices for this one here. And of course I jumped at the opportunity and now I have my own Steam Deck. And it came in the mail yesterday, and so I spent last night kind of organizing everything and making the emulation interface a little bit better. And that's what I'm going to show off in this video today. We're going to use a new tool called EmuDeck that will pre-configure all the emulation on the Steam Deck. For example, this will pre-configure all the controls within the emulators for you. It'll also set up all of the correct aspect ratios in RetroArch, as well as give you universal hotkeys and autosave and autoload, as well as game bezels on a lot of systems. And this will work all the way from classic systems up to the Nintendo Switch. And this thing is brand new, but it's being constantly updated. And it taps into the power of something called the Steam ROM Manager. And we'll go through that in this video as well. So needless to say, this is a very handy tool. It makes this process completely simple. And so in today's video, we'll go through this website and I'll walk you through this tutorial. And I've been working with this developer for about the past week or two. Basically, since I had that last Steam Deck, I've been sending him all my configuration files. So I think over time, this is just going to get better and better. But as it stands even right now, I'm very happy with how this is set up. It'll make custom collections for you by system, and you can also browse through the entire game list as well. On top of that, you'll be able to customize the artwork to make it tailored exactly to how you want. And to me, this is ideal. I want to get in and out of my games within the Steam OS, and to be able to do all that through just the gamepad itself. And so far, this is the easiest method I've found. And so, let's check it out. Without any further delay, let's jump into it. Okay, first thing, we're going to switch over to the desktop client. We're going to go into power and then switch to desktop. And so for this part, I'm actually going to use screen capture here just to make it a little bit easier. You're going to want to go into the discover store and then go into games and then emulators. And within here, you're gonna to wanna to install all the emulators that you wanna have set up. For the most part, PSP and below will be taken care of through RetroArch. And then everything else like 3DS or GameCube, those will be covered by standalone emulators. And I've already installed all of them, but all you would do is just hit the install button here. After that, go into the application launcher on the bottom left here, go into games, and then open up each of these emulators at least one time. You don't have to do any sort of configuration, you just need to open them and close them. This is gonna create the configuration folders that the tool is gonna need. But yeah, I'm not going to bore you with all this. Just open up all your emulators and then close them back down. Next, open up a web browser like Firefox and then type in emudeck.com. This will take you to the tool's main website. Now within here, it'll show you some of the features that I just talked about, as well as some of the hotkeys that are going to be universal. And then after that, there's just a 10-step guide below. We've actually already done the first three things. We've gone into desktop mode, we have downloaded all the emulators, and we've opened each one of them at least once. Next, we're going to download the Steam ROM Manager. And we don't have to do anything else with it right now, we just need to download it. After that, we need to download the EmuDeck installer. There's going to be two options here, and it depends on whether or not you have the ROMs on your SD card or internal storage. I'm doing everything off an SD card, so I'm going to use that one instead. A window is going to pop up and ask you to open it. What you actually want to do is just save it instead. Next, go into your Downloads folder and then move the EmuDeck app over to your desktop. And actually, that's about it. We don't really need the website anymore. The rest of the instructions will come through the app itself. So let's go to the desktop and start up the app. It's going to ask you, do you really want to open this? And you say, yeah, man, I want to do it. Now, this app is basically just a really clever shell script inside of the terminal console. And so what it'll do here is it'll download the necessary files to run the app, and then it's going to create ROM folders on your SD card or your internal storage if that's what you use. After that, it's going to make sure that you have your emulators installed, and then it'll download and configure each of the RetroArch cores that you're going to want to use. If you're familiar with RetroArch, you know this is going to save you a ton of time. After that, we're getting pretty close to being done with the setup. Now we just need to move over our game files into the ROMs and BIOS folders that it is now created. And as you can see with mine, it's within the SD card, and then a folder called Emulation, and then ROMs or BIOS. And so what we're going to do here is navigate to the root folder of my SD card. I'm also going to make two windows to make it easier. In the Emulation folder, you can see there's a BIOS and ROMs folder. And that's exactly like how it says within the app itself. Now I've already created a ROMs folder. I've moved over all my game files. And so what I need to do now is go into my own ROMs folder, 
and then grab all of my games and then move them into that new folder. Now this is kind of an extra step for me because I didn't realize it was going to create new folders at the time. But for example, what you could do is load all of your ROMs up to an external hard drive, then plug that into the Steam Deck, and then transfer them directly from the hard drive into the dedicated ROM section that the app has created. Either way, all you really need to do is just move over those ROM files and I won't bore you with that process. After that, you're going to need to move over your BIOS files. If you're not familiar with BIOS files, these are basically system files that will allow certain emulators to run. And I can't show you where to get these because they are copyrighted, but you can just search for RetroArch BIOS packs and usually find what you need. Anyway, now that we've moved over our ROMs and BIOS files, we're ready to start the final configuration of the Steam ROM Manager. Now, the first thing you want to do, and it's kind of counterintuitive, is to exit Steam in the taskbar here on the bottom right. Now, we're going to open up the Steam ROM Manager, which should be in your Downloads folder. It's going to ask you, do you really want to open this? And you're going to say yes. And then it's going to ask you again, do you really, really want to open it? And you know what to do. And so this is what the Steam ROM Manager will look like and it's already been pre-configured for you through the EmuDeck app. Usually this will take quite a while to set up, so it's really handy that it's all been done for you. All you really have to do is just go up to the top left and hit the preview button, and then select Generate App List. From there, it's going to find all of your games. You can see I have 421 titles here installed during this run, and it's going to go through here and download all of the artwork for those games. And generally, there's going to be two different images that you're really going to focus on. The one that you're seeing here that's kind of in a horizontal view are called grids, but the most important are actually called posters. And these are the ones that are going to show up in the Steam Deck operating system interface. And with any luck, if your games are named appropriately, the database is going to find them and then download the appropriate artwork too. And so honestly, once this is all done, you're basically done at that point, but it's very likely that you're going to find errors as you're going through this. For example, I've found that like if I have a game that's just called Tetris, sometimes it won't know which version of Tetris it is. And so what you'll want to do is kind of scroll through everything and get a feel for how many things are going to need to be updated. Sometimes it's a matter of changing the name of the ROM and then rerunning that scrape again, or other times you may want to actually just do it manually. For example, what if you don't like a certain artwork that it chooses for a game? For example, this Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, I'm not a big fan. But as you can see, there are actually four different downloaded images here. And so what I can do is scroll through these and pick one that I like the best. For example, I like this one here. It reminds me of the original NES cover. But for other games, like Little Nemo here, I know this one isn't named appropriately, but it just doesn't have any box art within the database. And that will sometimes happen among lesser known games. So luckily, you can actually upload your own artwork. First thing I would check is the Steam Grid database. You can search for your games here, and it'll show the artwork here in an appropriate format. For example, my NES version of Bionic Commando shows the most recent Xbox version of the game. So instead, what I can do is download the old NES box art by clicking on the download button within the Steam database, and then saving that somewhere on the Steam Deck. From there, I can go back to the game, press the little picture icon on the bottom left, then navigate to wherever I save that picture, and then that new cover will show up as the last picture within that series. And so there we go, now I've changed it over. Now of course you don't have to grab the images from the Steam database, you could even make your own if you're feeling up for it. Either way, that's how you would create your own artwork. And of course, first thing I would do is just check to see if there's other artwork available that you might like better than the one that is initially downloaded. Okay, now once you've got all your posters sorted and you're happy with how they all look, then you might want to go into the grid section as well, and then also have a look here too. These grids will only show up in your most recently played game, as well as when you actually click on the game so they're not really quite as visible, but all the same, you may want to go in and change these ones too. It's kind of a huge rabbit hole, honestly, so you really just kind of configure what you want and then move on. Okay, and so once you're ready to go, what you want to do is press Save App List, and this will essentially move everything over onto Steam. Now initially, you'll see a little pop-up here on the bottom right, and then that pop-up will go away and you'll think it's done. But actually, the first time you do it, it takes a long time, like three or four minutes. So what I would do is go over to the event log and wait until it says done adding or removing entries. Once you see that, then it's ready to go. If you close out the app before it's finished, then you're not going to get all the pictures within Steam. I made this mistake a couple times myself, so I just wanted to give that warning. Now, a couple other tips and tricks within the Steam ROM Manager, you have a lot of configuration options too if you want to get into it. For example, when I scraped all my Sega Saturn games, they didn't show up. And that's because within here, I needed to add the CHD file extension so it would find my CHD games. Now, I'm sure this is something the developer will fix in the future, but those are the kind of tools that you have at your disposal if you do want to make some adjustments. Same thing here within the Steam category. You could name this whatever you want, and that's what it's going to appear as within the Steam operating system. So if you wanted it to 
could say Sega Saturn instead of Saturn, this is where you would change it. And finally, if you get to the point where you actually don't want to have this anymore on your Steam Deck, what you want to do is go into Settings, and there's an option here that says Remove All Added App Entries. Just click that Remove button, it'll take everything off your Steam Deck so you can start over from scratch if you want it. And of course, if you go and make changes, like you add or remove games, or you want to change some box art, then all you have to do is go back to the preview tab and then select generate app list again. It's going to pull all those games again, and it'll typically remember all of your artwork too. And so now you can go and modify it again, and then just select save app list one more time. And so you have an unlimited number of options to basically tweak this to your heart's content. And I gotta say, even though it only takes about 20 minutes to set all this up the first time around, I found myself like getting stuck in that rabbit hole. Like I was spending like four, five, six hours just configuring everything because I wanted everything to look very pretty and perfect. And so just be warned that if you do start doing this, you may end up not being able to stop like me. But either way, it's really awesome to have all of our games over on SteamOS. And so now let's actually move over to the game mode and actually check it out. Now I'm using my video capture here, so it's gonna show everything in 4K and it's gonna be a little bit sluggish. This is one of the bugs that are within the game side of SteamOS right now. I'd really love to be able to show it to you in native resolution instead. But either way, as you can see, if I tab over to the collection side, you can see all of the different collections that are separated by system. And there's a lot more systems I could have used, but these are just all the basics that I chose myself. And yeah, if you go over to the non-Steam section, you can actually see all all the games at once. And on top of that, if you wanted, you could create your own collections too. For example, if you wanted to have a Mario Kart collection, you could create that within the operating system here on this side, and then move all those games into that collection. And so you're not just limited to organizing things by, say, for example, Sega Genesis. You could basically create anything you wanted within these collections menus. And so as you can see, the sky is the limit when it comes to this tool. This thing's only been around for about a week right now, and it is really impressive already. And I'm excited to see what it's like a month or even two months from now. Anyway, that's about it for this video. I just wanted to show you how to set up MU Deck, and also some of the behind the scenes things when it comes to the Steam ROM manager. And to me personally, this is like a perfect mixture between the Steam OS and the games that run natively in Steam, and then also having my favorite emulation systems too. I found that this approach does make me want to keep a very trim collection, nothing more than say like 30 games or so per system. That allows me to have just my very favorites available at any time, and keeps my overall Steam Deck library fairly manageable. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Is this something that you're interested in trying out? Personally, I think there's going to be plenty of other options in the near future as more people and developers get their hands on the Steam Deck. And of course, I'm really excited about getting Linux-based operating systems like Botticera up and running on this as well. But for now, I think MU Deck is a really impressive start, and I'm excited to see what happens next. And also, let me know what other Steam Deck videos you're interested in seeing from me. I was thinking about doing a comparison of the models between the one that I have here, as well as the one that I borrowed from my friend, so you can see the differences between the screen, for example. And I also plan on making a comparison video between this and the Aya Neo Next, as well as the Odin Pro. Anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming. Thank you.